All right, all right. That's my Matthew McConaughey. Um, I'm going to try to get us through the rest of the semester with stuff. So um, first thing I want to do is show you guys how to flip this thing so we can kind of do it the way that um, the way that Eric has it set up in his PDF uh, in his drawing. So uh, I think the easiest way to do this is, you know, obviously we want to kind of keep this thing close to the center and we want to be able to flip everything around. So this is going to sound kind of weird, but what I'll usually do is I'll take a, a column and stick it right at the origin, right where this little cross guy is, and I'll make that column uh, ridiculously tall. I'll make him like, I don't know, 60 feet tall or something like that. Uh, and we're going to delete them later, but I just want to make sure that I keep the drawing or the, the building centered in the uh, on the sheet when I flip this thing around. Uh, so then I'm going to go to F3 to see what's going on in the world of three dimensions. And then I am just to be sure, I'm going to hit Control L to look at my layers, hit Select All, and then the Eyeball to look at all of them and hit OK. And there I've got everything turned on. So it looks like I've got an extra site plan that I need to get rid of. I must have made a copy of that at some point, unbeknownst to myself. Link, go away. So yeah, I want to make sure you got the site plan correct, you know, with the slope going up. So there's my that post that I made, so I'm going to just use that to rotate around. Uh, and then I'm going to select, try to get this kind of squared up, and select the model. I'm not going to select this stuff over here, just the model. Uh, and then I'm going to zoom in on the top of the post right there. And then I'm going to do Control E to rotate and rotate from the top of that post. And what I might need to do is actually type in, because it's going to be all funny because there's so many objects below, I might need to type in, um, Just I can just hit the tab key. So I've got this little, this little palette here with all these numbers, so I can hit the tab key to tab into it, tab into it and say 180. So now it's it should be flipped. Yeah, everything's flipped, and uh, of course I had it flipped the right way, so I'm going to flip it back again. And uh, Control E. Type in 180, 180. And there's my plan. So the next thing I want to do is uh, start doing dimensions. So dimensions are, are pretty simple. They are in the dimension tool, believe it or not. I know. Dimensions are right here. Uh, we do this in a construction method. It's a continuous string, and they go in the x, y direction. We've got all this stuff is set up correctly. A couple little things I want you to just check to make sure are right. One thing is the dynamic witness line gap. It's the d dimension between that. Um, witness line to the object that we're clicking on, we probably want that to be about, let's, let's say we want it to be about a foot. So sorry, just make sure you see that, that's about a foot. The rest of the, the stuff can stay the same. We also, sorry, there's one other thing, also want to make sure that this is on the dimensions layer. One foot, dimensions layer. There we go. Uh, and then I do dimensions in three tiers. I do the overall dimension, intermediate uh, building, uh, chunks of building dimension, and then I do uh, window and door rough opening dimensions. Those are the three tiers. So the first tier is going to go from here all the way to here. And you'll notice when I'm clicking, I'm making sure that I'm getting where there's a checkpoint. I want to make sure I get this little circle, because that means circle with the crosshair when I click, because that means that I've clicked on an object. Uh, so that if I ever have to move objects around, then the uh, <clears throat> dimension will change with it. So I'll come up here. I've got this pencil and double click. And here you can see I've got these lines, and sometimes they want to go off in directions or whatever. You just want to look at this guy. This will tell you everything that's going on. You know, whether it's straight, that way, that way, that way. So it's kind of giving me a preview of where we are. So you, so you just sort of go over until you get it where it's, you know, straight. Uh, and set it maybe about there. There's our first dimension. 
So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to do these intermediate dimensions here, here, wherever the building sort of jogs in and out. I'm going to hit that and put that right there. I kind of like to have these space so that there's enough space between that you can tell that this number is associated with that line, but not so far space that they're kind of floating in space. Floating in space? Space that there's floating in space. Wow, that's good grammar, John. Okay, so then uh, I got lost in my own sentence structure there, didn't I? I'm clicking along here. So and when we hand draft, we don't we typically don't do what's called closing a dimension, you know, where we dimension all the way across. We might leave the, this last dimension off or something if we're, if we're hand drafting because there's a lot more inaccuracy. But in uh, the BIM world, we want to make sure we dimension everything because then we can see where our mistakes are, essentially. Um, so I want to make sure I'm coming up with this. And I want to space it so that these are about the same, same spacing there and there. And one of the very cool things that uh, Mr. Robert figured out the other day was if you take, if you uh, shift and click your elevation like this and go into the elevation settings, you can display the height of openings as well. So you can actually get the window height to show up below like that, which is kind of cool. I've never uh, done that before, and I kind of dig that. Um, one thing you'll notice is I forgot a couple things. I forgot these uh, guys down here. What I can do is... Uh, with this dimension line selected and my dimension tool active, I can click on it and it'll bring up a pet palette. And this lets me insert a point. So I can go here and insert point. Whoops, I didn't, get, I didn't do it right. Let's try that again here. Okay, it doesn't like me. There. Very small dimension. So you can see it's adding those dimensions on now. There we go. So it's getting a little hairy with the lines. You know, there's a lot of lines coming down, so I like to sort of clean that up. I like to keep the exterior dimensions far away from the building. As you guys have learned, when you're trying to make this thing the way they dimensioned in the PDF, it's a little hard to read. So I like to do this and uh, change the length of the witness line on some of these, um, on the third tier of dimensions at least, and pull them up to about there. And that's how I dimension. So I'm going to do one more side, and I'll let you guys... Uh, take it from there. Boom. There. I tend to do the overall dimensions on the um, top and right. And then I don't do that third, that first tier, I should say, the first tier dimensions, I don't do those on the bottom and the left. So I'll do there, then over here, here, here. And then I'll start working my way along. Couple things to note, you can see right there I put one in the wrong spot. If I click on it again, it'll go away. Isn't this fun watching me do data entry? It's like a most, world's most awesome spectator sport. Okay. Done there. Clicking out here. But trying to keep these about equally spaced, you know, apart from each other. Like that. Uh, we'll select this guy and change the witness line gap. So that's a little bit further away from the building. And those are my exterior dimensions. Interior dimensions are just a string, super simple. The one thing you want to make sure you do is always dimension from the same side of a wall, though. Uh, so I'm going to go from the outside to one face of a wall, you know, wherever, wherever I'm going to go to a face of a wall. I've got some wall issues here, don't I? That face of that wall, that face of that wall, 
that face. Um, here I'm going to do both faces of the wall so that I can also hit the cabinet. And those two sides of the cabinet. And then I don't dimension the windows. And that's my interior dimension string. So I'll do a couple of those, right, to make sure I hit everything. Uh, I'll hit this, I'll hit, I'll do this, no, what do I want to do this? I'll hit these columns. Still got that other column I gotta delete. And then here I can uh, hit the island. The center of that column. And then maybe just the outside of that wall. And then I'll do it the other way. Testing my luck. This video is going to die on me. Here I might just go to this this point with the garage. Make sure I get that vertical dimension in there like that. And there we go. We have dimensioned the plan. On to next video. Do this for all the floors uh, on all four sides of the building on lower, main, and upper. There we go.